This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. What's up, what's up, everybody? Ricky Widmer here, along with the Mark Weber. Dub them ease. And we are back for another edition of The Onside Kick, right here on Most Valuable Podcast, your one-stop shop for everything NFL on YouTube. There's more people that talk about NFL, but for MVP, this is your one-stop no, shop for it. the NFL. Holy this spot. is it. It starts here, it ends here. If you want NFL kick. content, you come here and nowhere else. And it is an interesting time, Mark, because... It's the off season. It's yep. like I told Dave and Sean because, like, on the fast break, we're rearing up for the draft and everything. And I said, you know what? Me and you are kind of in this like purgatory right now, where it's like the draft just ended. Mm-hmm. We had our winners and losers. We're not quite ready to start previewing teams for next year. So we're in this kind of limbo state. So yep. I came up with something today, and it's great that I was thinking of it. Because apparently the topic we talked about, or we're going to talk about now, you thought about earlier today. So me and you on the same wavelengths from different areas of where we were at, a couple miles apart between us. But we're going to start doing fantasy football rankings coming into this year. So we're going to start today with ranking fantasy football quarterbacks. Then we'll do running backs, wide receivers, tight ends, defenses, and special teams, and end it off with kickers. And that'll be great. Because and right yeah, after we're actually that, going to talk about kickers. No, we are. We're going to yeah, do a whole podcast a on kickers. Um, but after that, mm-hmm. then we go right into our team previews and our divisional previews, which will take us all the way until like mid-August. We take a week off, playoff predictions. So it's pretty much boom, boom, boom with these fantasy rankings all the way through. So how we're going to do it is we have three segments here on YouTube. It'll be three segments blog talk, radio, podcast services around the world. You'll listen all the way through. We're going to start from the bottom. So we're going to start 32, go all the way through, end with our number one. And before we get into it, a little housekeeping here at the beginning. You want to help support MVP, make sure to check out patreon.com backslash most valid podcast. We changed the $5 tier. So go check that out. It is a new tier. Well, same price, but it is a new tier, new reward system. For that, I'm excited. Also, for it. I think you guys are well, gonna like it. You're awesome because you came up with it. Yeah, that's why you're. Excited that's why I'm excited. For it. But no, I think you guys are gonna like it because it's a. It's just better. I yeah. think it's better. No, and it was. It's something that I think will be a lot better than what we used to have with the Q and A. Also, if you want an MVP T-shirt, the one that Mark's wearing right there, make sure to check the store link down below in the description. Mosvalpodcast.com. You can also check out the store there, but you can also check out everything for MVP. Goes up to mostvalvepodcast.com. And then last but not least, if you're on iTunes, make sure to give the onside kick a five-star rating on iTunes. It would mean the world to us. And it lets everyone know, hey, this is a great podcast. You should check it out. And they go, yeah, sure. And they go ahead and click it. And then they are part of the MVP family, or as Sean calls them on Twitter, the MVP fam. But we're going to start with our quarterback rankings. We're going to first segment. God, I'm so excited to start at the bottom. 22. Well, this is the first time yeah. that you have started at the bottom. Because, like, mm-hmm. on big boards for the PTP, for our rankings on the um, fast break, we start from the bottom and yeah. then go to the top. So we'll start off 32 through 22. Starting at the bottom, number 32, the quarterback of the New York Jets, Josh McCown. Then the quarterback of the Cleveland Browns. It's weird to say. I almost said Buffalo Bills. Cleveland Browns, Tyrod Taylor. Then Miami Dolphin, Ryan Tannehill coming in at number 30. Joe Flacco, the quarterback of the Ravens at 29. Then we got rookie quarterback. Some people might be upset about this. They might say A.J. McCarron, but both Mark and I agreed. We're going to put Josh Allen as the starter for the Bills. He is right there at 28. 27, Jaguar quarterback Blake Bortles. Then at 26, Bengal quarterback Andy Dalton, the Red Rifle. And then we got Case Keenum at number 25. And I said Andy Dalton's name not wrong. It's not the Red yeah, Rifle. I'm surprised. It's the Red Rocket. I'm surprised. That's what he is throwing to A.J. Green. But at 25, mm-hmm. we've got Case Keenum, the quarterback of the Denver Broncos. Then Oakland Raider quarterback Derek Carr at number 24. Eli Manning, the quarterback of the G-Men in New York at 23. And then rounding everything out, number 22, quarterback of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, yep. Jameis Winston. So I'm going to throw it over to you, Mark. All right. Which one of these quarterbacks do you want to start with? Because we're not going to yeah. hit all of them. We're going to talk about a few of them. 
Well, what I, are you thinking about? What's one quarterback you want to I start wanna, with? I'm going to group a group a few things okay. here. Okay. Um, and it is the the question marks quarterback. So there's, there's a three lot of them. of them here. Well, for sure, there's three big question right. marks. Being well, I'll say I'll say there are four. There okay. are four. That is Josh McCown, mm-hmm. Tyrod Taylor, Josh Allen, and I'm going to throw Joe Flacco in there. I'd throw one more. Who's that? Ryan Tannehill, just because he's coming off an injury. But I'm only saying that because there is a rookie behind them, mm-hmm. or in Josh Allen case, is he, case he is the rookie. Okay. So that's what I'm saying with that. But I, I'm right there with you mm-hmm. with Ryan Tannehill coming off of injury um, as well. But, you know, these are people where— So basically all of our quarterbacks from like 28 At down. the bottom. <laughs> well, that, and that's the thing. That's what I'm saying for fantasy football. Mm-hmm. 110% avoid them at all costs. Mm-hmm. I like Tyrod Taylor. I would take him as a backup— if there wasn't Baker Mayfield sitting right there, you know, uh, these are people where there's not a guarantee that they're going to start. And even if they do start, when are they going to stop? Mm-hmm. I think it can be agreed between the two of us, Josh McCown, Tyrod Taylor. If it is AJ McCarron, uh, those three guys will not play the full season. Joe Flacco should play the full season, but I don't know. Apparently Harbaugh loves you know, Lamar Jackson's accuracy. I mm-hmm. think that's just a silly headline that everyone was excited about. But anyways, at any point, these guys could get benched. And you don't want to waste a draft pick in fantasy football on a guy that's going to get benched at some point and no longer play. Mm-hmm. You know, it's too valuable. Uh, I got Kareem Hunt in the second to the last round of the fantasy football draft. And our draft is weird. Well, that was, you got him in the rookie round, if I'm not nope. mistaken. Did you? I got him at the second to last round. Okay. It was the very end. Because we do have a rookie round. We do. We our, our whole thing is weird. We don't need to get into it right now, mm-hmm. but there's specific things you do in specific rounds. At the very end, it was a flex round, I'm pretty sure, yeah. if I remember right. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, I don't know who else to feel good about in Kansas City. I'll take Kareem Hunt. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can get good guys later. And you don't want to waste one on a Tyrod Taylor as your backup quarterback mm-hmm. when he maybe gets benched week three, four, five. Now, here's the thing I'm looking at. Every quarterback that you just listed, I agree with except for Joe Flacco. And the reason why I say that is— I don't think he'll necessarily for, get benched. Well, no, For we'll me, see. the Ravens are an interesting one because it's like, oh— John Harbaugh likes um, Lamar Jackson. People are saying, oh, Marty, Mo- Marty Morningwig. He's a guy who, you know, worked with Michael Vick. He was with so-and-so. He works with that mobile quarterback. He can work with Lamar Jackson. Here's the thing for me. Number one, when it comes to the will Joe Flacco sit, will he get benched? We don't know if Lamar Jackson is going to be the second on the depth chart or the third. Because don't forget, they did sign RG3. So what I'm kind of thinking is no, no, don't do that. Um, the way I'm thinking, too late. It's been done. Joe Flacco plays the whole year this mm-hmm. year. RG three is kind of like that quarterback, that veteran on the sideline to mentor Lamar Jackson sure. while Joe Flacco's doing his thing. Also, the thing with Joe Flacco that I think is interesting in terms of fantasy last year, no weapons, no weapons for me. Not only this year do they get two to me. Phenomenal tight ends in the draft. A guy like Hayden Hurst who can go out and catch balls, but also a guy in Mark Andrews that caught a lot of footballs from Baker Mayfield at Oklahoma last year. They go out in free agency. They get Willie Sneed from the New Orleans Saints. Now, the big question with him is how much of it was him and how much of it was Drew Brees making him better. They get Michael Crabtree, who to me is going to be the number one wide receiver on this team. And they go out and get John Brown from Arizona. So to me, the combination of mainly those five guys, also I'm looking at a guy like Jordan Lastly, mm-hmm. who was a main target for Josh Rosen at UCLA. They kind of said, Joe Flacco, we're going to give you weapons. So for Potential me, fantasy, weapons. Yeah. Potential weapons. So for me, fantasy-wise, now I might look into Joe Flacco, maybe not as my starter, but later on I might say, you know what? I maybe don't need to spur or splurge on a backup quarterback. I can go with a wide receiver or running back because later in the rounds I'll just steal Joe Flacco sure. and he'll be my backup. Of course, if bye weeks line up. Yeah, and, and I don't think that – I personally don't believe that Joe Flacco is going to get benched this season. I think no, he'll play off this, this whole year. season. This after is an this Alex year, Smith-like get, situation. He'll get cut. Um, but – 
if they do really love Lamar mm-hmm. and Joe Flacco does things that he's done in recent years, which is not be that great, mm-hmm. he might get benched. It's possible. He could. The risk to me says I would not draft him. Mm-hmm. These guys right here are people I don't really want to draft. I would be willing to draft a Jameis, an Eli, a Derek Carr, maybe a Case Keenum, Mm -hmm. maybe an Andy Dalton at the very end. But these are people I don't necessarily want to draft. These are people who I'm sitting here saying, more likely than not, I would love to have you on a waiver wire or with at least maybe have you on the waiver wire with like a Josh McCown or Ryan Tannehill, something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for most of these guys, I don't. A question I want to ask you. Okay. Do we believe that Eli Manning is going to be back? Because Eli Manning was a yes. decently good fantasy option as a quarterback. I've used mm-hmm. him plenty of times. Um, but last year was a down year. The year before that wasn't that spectacular either necessarily. Mm-hmm. You're saying yes. Why Why the should re- somebody be willing so, to draft Eli Manning? The reason why I'm going to say yes is, number one, number first and foremost, number one, is that there is a Ben McAdoo is no longer the head coach. Which is nice. There is no longer dysfunction in that coaching staff for New York. Plus, bringing over a guy like Pat Shermer, the way I look at the Giants, I'm not going to pick them to win the Super Bowl. I did that last year, and they bit me in the butt. Or I... Kiss them, as some would say. Kiss of death style to them. To me, Shermer coming over is only going to benefit Eli Manning. Giving him guys like Saquon Barkley and Jonathan Stewart in the backfield is going to be help. Although you're saying, well, if he hands the ball off, that's not the same thing. However, with Saquon Barkley, he's not just a guy that you hand the ball off to. He's a guy you kick it out to with a pass. So if you throw a pass, that'll get you some points from Eli Manning. Plus, the big question to me otherwise is what are we going to get from Odell this year? Odell was injured last year. Brandon Marshall was injured last year. Of course, Marshall's now cut. Your main three wide receivers as of right now, looking at the depth chart, are Odell Beckham, Corey, Cody Latimer, who you're getting from the Denver Broncos in free agency, and it looks like Sterling Shepard are going to be your main one, two, three. Sterling Shepard, number I mean, two. Well, number two. So you can order those however you want. Right now, they no, show the man some respect. Right now, Sterling Shepard mm-hmm. is slotted in the slot when it comes to the depth chart I'm looking at. But Eli's going to have weapons around him. It's going to mm-hmm. be a better team than last year. And he's actually going to have a coach that will have a good control over this locker room. Won't be a Ben McAdoo situation. And last year was kind of complicated for Eli because it was like, hey, you're going good. Hey, we're going to bench you. Yeah. And that, I think, just messed with the psyche of the entire season. But it happened at the end of the season when it didn't matter for fantasy football anyways. Exactly. And it's like Eli, I think, is a guy where if it's me, I'm drafting him later on maybe to mm -hmm. potentially, hey, be my backup in a bye, but also drafting him to where it's like, hey, he's my backup, but, you know, if I didn't get that strong of a starter, if I got like a Derek, not like a Derek Carr, but if I got like a Mitch Trubisky and Alex Smith as my starter— you know, maybe I draft Eli on the uptick that, hey, maybe he has a good year and then mm-hmm. becomes my starter late in the year. I kind of feel like with Eli, we if you're if you're wondering what Eli Manning is going to be in mm-hmm. fantasy football, all you really have to do is look at Sam Bradford, look at Case Keenum, you know, mm-hmm. p- pull the the Minnesota Vikings quarterbacks together yeah. and that offense together to see what's going to happen. Well, I just, and it's I look not at what necessarily Case something was a, you're that excited about like, fantasy football wise. Well, I look at what Case Keenum was able to do with Shermer. Mm-hmm. And if Joe, like if Odell Beckham is healthy, yeah, that is tenfold because Odell mm-hmm. is better than any wide receiver that the Vikings have. No dissing on my team. We just don't yeah. have an Odell Beckham on our team. And it's just, I'm sorry, Eli Manning to me is a better quarterback mm-hmm. than Case Keenum. So oh, 100%. To me, but what I'm Pat saying Shermer is, should be able to get more out of Eli. What I'm saying is, you look at the team and you look mm-hmm. at what they did, and it's not anything that you want to be excited about fantasy football wise. Mm-hmm. You do for Saquon Barkley, but was and it, that's a conversation for next but week. Was it coaching? Was coaching the main reason? Well, that's his game plan. Exactly. Was it Ben yeah. McAdoo's problem? And now that no, there's no, no, no. New... I'm talking about Pat Shermer. Pat mm-hmm. Shermer's game plan is going to be great for uh, not Odell, better for be Saquon is what great you're saying. Great for Saquon, a little mm-hmm. less for Eli. Where Ben McAdoo was promises of, and even when he, I'm talking about more mm-hmm. when he was an offensive coordinator, 
than the coach, but mm -hmm. it was, we're going to throw the ball all day. That's all we're going to do. That's mm -hmm. why they got Brandon Marshall. That's why they brought him in, was to throw the ball on everybody. You know who else is going to, and I know this isn't going to help an Eli discussion, but mm -hmm. you know who else is going to benefit from Pat Shermer, who we'll probably talk about in a couple weeks? Who's and that? that's the tight end, Evan yep. Ingram, because Kyle Rudolph was a main target yeah. for Case Keenum. Last guy I'm kind of thinking about that I want to throw out, sure. though, is Derek Carr. Because he's a guy to me where, I think it was either last year or two years ago, he was my starting quarterback. And he was mm -hmm. a like solid starter. And a lot of people targeted him in this last year's draft. Exactly. But what are you thinking with him coming into this year? Because to me, the big question first and foremost is, there's a lot, like John Gruden, and because of that, there's a lot of turnover. However, you look at his potential receivers, tight end he's at Jared Cook, who's no slouch, but he's no like elite pass catcher. Then the wide receivers, they go out and trade for Martavius Bryant. They still have Amari Cooper. They go inside and Jordy Nelson, who was a main target for Aaron Rodgers. And then in the draft, they go and grab a guy who I think could be a possible sleeper for late in the season in Marcel Aitman, who was a big target for Mason Rudolph at Oklahoma State. What you Not kind to mention of thought, even their uh, their running backs too. Exactly, their running backs in like Lynch, Martin, um, Jalen Rashard. They've got Washington, who also gets into the mix as well. What are your thoughts on Derek Carr with all the change and turnover going on in Oakland? My th my thing for Derek Carr is I think he more than almost anybody mm -hmm. is the boomer bust draft pick. Okay, if you get Derek Carr, you are banking on that he's gonna boom. He's gonna mm -hmm. be great, but. I don't see a way where Derek Carr is an average quarterback in fantasy football this year. Mm -hmm. I see he's either going to be fantastic or Gruden does not Gruden 3.0 does mm -hmm. not work and it's not going to happen. And I'm nervous about it because you look at some of the things he does and, and I don't like Jordy Nelson because he was on the Packers. I can never like him, mm -hmm. but he's a damn good wide receiver. But there were injury concerns there. Yeah. You know, I look at uh, Cooper, but with Cooper and Crabtree last year, you know, they didn't do as much as people expected. Still did a fine job, mm -hmm. obviously, but not, they didn't elevate Derek Carr as much as people kind of expected. Uh, Lynch doesn't look the same as he used to. Uh, you had the, the muscle hamster Doug Martin out there who, well, he's, he's an enigma. Mm -hmm. All the time. You never really know, like, is he going to be that great guy? He shows those flashes, and then at other times, not well, so much. Well, I believe much. he was injured for a little mm -hmm. part of last year. But, yeah, he he was. But even before that, too, mm -hmm. he's that guy where he will have a huge flash and look amazing, and then yep. other times disappear. Exactly. So there's all these type of situations here where I say Derek Carr is either going to be a top 10 fantasy football mm -hmm. quarterback or he's going to be at the very bottom and what this is is what i looked at it is how comfortable am i drafting this guy and i'm not very comfortable taking a risk in fantasy football on a quarterback i will take a risk on a uh, a running back or a wide receiver because those to me when you take a risk on a mm -hmm. Kareem Hunt or when Jordan Howard was a rookie and you took the risk on him late to say maybe he'll be good, maybe he won't, who knows. Well, you know You're my safer to do that. You know my draft strategy. Like in a typical I know our league is different, so I can't have this strategy. Yeah. But in a traditional fantasy draft, I am a guy running back, running back. That's where I'm going. I'm getting yep. my starting two running backs out of the gate. Because those are the that's the position that's going to get me the most points. Yeah. Like, I'll be completely honest. And saying this probably isn't the best idea because you, me, Dave, Sean, I we're think all we've in all the same league. Strategies. <laughs> A running back I'm going to be targeting this year is Saquon Barkley. Mm. Like, if I get him, I'll be happy. Well, I'll be yeah. extremely happy. You can say that I'm because targeting. we all would expect anybody to be willing to take Saquon exactly. Barkley. But before I, because I think Derek Carr is going to, what I'm going to say bleeds into the next question I was mm -hmm. going to ask. Before I ask the final question that I have for this part of our rankings, any guys that we haven't mentioned that you're like, you know what, I want to give a little snippet about this guy. Uh, my snippet is I think Case Keenum, even though I'm low mm -hmm. on him, I think he will be a very solid backup mm -hmm. quarterback for fantasy football. Okay. Um, I thought you were all like backup for the Broncos. No. Who's he getting benched by? Paxton Lynch. Paxton I don't Lynch, know. baby? <laughs> Paxton Lynch, you very well might get cut. Mm -hmm. um, no, I think he'll be a very good 
backup for some people um, to be able to go ahead and draft Depending on when your starters buy it. Exactly. He's a matchup dependent kind of guy, but that's a good team. That is a very good team. And you know who's got a great defense? They... The Denver Broncos have an amazing defense. Mm-hmm. They're going to be a top five defense this year. So without a doubt, he's going to have his opportunities to be on the field. I almost said your guy, but it's Sean's guy because I forgot you weren't here they, this week. Mm-hmm. Um, they they drafted uh, Sean's guy at the tight end position, the one of the sleepers that we mentioned in Troy Fumagalli, um, Illinois-born kid. So, I mean, they drafted him. They also got Jake Butt, the Michigan tight end also. But, I mean— their top three wide receivers. I mean, Demarius, are uh, yeah, Demarius Thomas, Emmanuel Sanders, and then they're now new number three, Cortland Sutton. Yeah, so which I is mean, a steal. He's going to be a great option, I think, for them. The last question I wanted to ask though before we wrap this segment up is basically, who do you think out of here? Because some people are going to look at these rankings and go, no way does Derek Carr finish with the what? Where do we have him at? With the twenty fourth. Most points in fantasy this year. Sure. Who's the one guy from this bracket, 22 through 32, that you think after their performance this year, when we do these rankings next year, they're going to move up into the next bracket? Uh, well, the first thing I want to say is to, to people to remind you mm-hmm. guys of, I think it's, we're not predicting where these people are going to be at the end this of the year. This is just who we would draft. Exactly. It's the yeah. order we're willing to draft these people. And we're like combining we're going in your and my Exactly. Ranking. So yeah. the, some of these were Ricky's higher on them than mm-hmm. I am, whatever. Um, so this is a tricky question that you're asking, and I'll answer it in two different ways. Okay. One, the safe answer is one of these rookies. You okay. know, probably like a Baker Mayfield. You know, he's the guy who's going to probably well, shoot I mean, himself up. He's not on our exactly. List. That's yeah. the thing. So, like one of those guys will obviously shoot their way up. Mm-hmm. And I, but you got to say it because someone in the comment section is going to mention it. Um, uh, Baker Mayfield could win the job from Tyrod Taylor, and yeah, he, he will. Could. He probably will. Week Although one. Hugh Jackman, Jackman apparently uh, promised Tyrod the job already. Right? <laughs> he gave him a good old promise with a <laughs> wink, wink, and his uh, and a nudge, and it crossed behind his fingers. Anyways, the real answer is the obvious one. It's Derek Carr. Okay. Derek Carr is the guy who I think this season, even though I'm not high on Gruden, this season I think he very easily, and if Gruden works out, he'll propel himself mm-hmm. right back up to where people had him before, possibly a top 10 fantasy quarterback. To me, I was thinking too, Derek Carr was one of them because mm-hmm. I think with Derek Carr, them adding the receivers they did this year around Amari Cooper, it's only going to help Derek Carr. Yeah. Plus, I mean, they've got the stable of running backs also that could catch the ball out of the backfield. The other one to me, and I know this is going to contradict what I'm saying because I feel like this will be his last year in Baltimore, but Joe Flacco, same situation though because, I mean, although they have Lamar Jackson behind him, this is one where I feel like if Joe Flacco's cut, he'll find a job somewhere else. And with the performance that he's going to give this year with the receivers that he has now, the Willie Sneeds, the... Um, Crabtree pulling free, the John Browns, he's going to play a lot better. The Hurst, mm-hmm. the Andrews, like I said, he's going to play a lot better than we're next year. People are going to go, yeah. hey, you know what? Maybe I should be a little higher on Joe Flacco. Look at what kind of a year he had and, last year. And one more shout out. Just okay. I don't, I don't want to necessarily say he's going to shoot up because I don't really mm-hmm. know what to expect out of him. Uh, but just if Jameis Winston, when was one offense, of us gonna? When was one of us gonna say it? Right, I if, was waiting for if it. If Jameis Winston and that offense can mm-hmm. perform how they should, I mean, on paper, apparently a commenter fantastic. said. W- apparently a commenter last week in our Redskin one said it was a good podcast until I said the Redskins were gonna beat the Buccaneers because to watch out the Bucks are gonna you be ruined bad. it. Yeah, I mean, you know, Deshaun Jackson <laughs> yeah, you ruined the podcast. Uh, uh, Deshaun Jackson, Mike Evans. I mean, mm-hmm. d- with Jameis Winston, it should, but it just hasn't happened yet. I don't no. know. It it makes sense, but it, you know, when's it gonna happen? That's my no, question. Ex- that's exactly it. And I mean, I'm looking at. Any additions, really? I mean, Ronald Jones they got in the backfield, but, I mean, they didn't add any huge wide receivers as well. But this is where I want to turn the conversation on you. What do you think about these quarterbacks that we're talking about, these quarterbacks in our 22 through 32? Let me know what you think about them down below in the comment section. Let's move on, though, into our next bracket of quarterbacks, and we are looking at now 11 through 21, if you're just coming to the segment, well, in the reverse, if you're coming to the segment on YouTube, make sure to check out 
our first segment where we talked about the quarterbacks at 22 through 32 for our fantasy football quarterback rankings. But let's start off at number 21. Got the Tennessee Titan quarterback, Marcus Mariota. Then at number 20, the new incumbent starter. Is Did I say that right? Would it be the incumbent starter? Because no. he's now coming into it. No, incumbent is it if you already, he's already had there. It. So he's, yeah. the, he's the challenger who now took over the spot, and he's now the starter. He is the starter. Because he kicked out the incumbent of Alex Smith. Yep. Am I using that right now? Alex Smith was... Was the incumbent, and then the challenger, yes. Patrick Mahomes, kicked him out. Basically. Patrick Mahomes, he's sitting there yeah. at 20. Number 19, Andrew Luck, Indianapolis Colts quarterback. Yep. Then at 18, Cardinal quarterback, Sam Bradford. He is now the second former Viking on our list, and I think he's going to be the only other former Viking on our list. Number 17, got the new now, contract. Here's an incumbent quarterback. Matty Ice, Matt Ryan. Mm-hmm. Then number 16 for the Cowboys, Dak Prescott. Number 15, San Francisco 49er quarterback, Illinois native, Jimmy Garoppolo, or some would say Garoppolo. Then at number 14, Big Ben Roethlisberger for the Steelers. Number 13, Alex Smith with the Washington Redskins. At 12, Jared Goff, Rams quarterback, and at number 11, Mark saying he's the GOAT, Mitch Trubisky with the Chicago Bears. Which is funny because you're actually higher on him than I am. I am. I had Mitch Trubisky at 10. You had him at 13. Yeah. And, I mean, that's where we'll start only because you mentioned it. And the thing with Trubisky that I just want to say, reason why I put him at 10 is I just have a weird feeling that with the free agency, it's yet again kind of the same theme that I said about Joe Flacco and about Derek Carr. Look at what the Bears have done. The Bears have added Allen Robinson. They added Ta- Taylor Gabriel. They added Anthony Miller in the draft. They bring in a coach like Matt Nagy, who, if you just look at look at what he did in KC and picture Mitch in that with a lot of play action in yep. my books of what they're going to do, I think he's going to have a better season. And I'm being bold by saying he'll be in the top 10 or should be in the top 10 for draftable quarterbacks this yeah. year. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm i definitely high on the potential for Mitch Trubisky, and I would love to have him. I would love to draft him. I mm-hmm. for sure would. Um, I think the biggest thing is, yeah, I mean, Allen Robinson's great. Anthony Miller's going to be fantastic. Trey Burton's going to be a, dish, a good addition with Shaheen as well at the tight end position. Uh, and, of course, we're going to have a, a coach that will actually be able to use um, Tariq Cohen mm-hmm. as opposed to just – as trying a, to just, have him be Jordan Howard. Just as a weapon. Yeah, exactly. You know, they they try to do these weird things where they want him to kind of be Jordan Howard, but mm-hmm. then they made it really obvious when they were going to do other, th- whatever. Yeah. So I think that there's some great potential here. My th- reservation for Mitch Trubisky, and the reason why I had him a little bit lower mm-hmm. as my 13th um, draftable quarterback, was purely because I think it'll take a tiny bit of time to learn the offense. You know, that's new the only system thing. coming in, a lot of new pieces coming and in. And a lot with of it new also. I mean, basically you have all brand new wide receivers, which yep. with the exception of Shaheen at the tight end position. And Kevin White, but he's been injured. Kevin White's not a thing. <laughs> uh you know, Josh Bellamy being your only other mm-hmm. like reoccurring thing, which by the time we get to trying to draft uh for fantasy football, Bellamy might not even be on the team. True. So you know, it's interesting right now. There's just a lot of new stuff. I think that Trubisky has some good potential, mm-hmm. and he's one of those people where if he falls or if he somehow – actually, the thing that I want to say with Trubisky is what I can see happening is somebody drafts him early, mm-hmm. expecting him to, to go, you know, lights out. And then he doesn't He do doesn't in want. week like one, two, three, four, and they you cut him. You drop him, and then you pick then him up. Then you can jump on him. Pounce on mm-hmm. him if he gets dropped. Here's the guy I wanted to ask you about first, but you brought up the Trubisky thing, so I asked you about him. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on Andrew Luck? Yeah, it's a tough one. Because for Andrew Luck, it's like if he's 100% healthy, top 10 fantasy quarterback, even with the wide receivers that they have in Indianapolis. However, if there's even a little bit of question about his health and what he's going to be like, what are you thinking with Andrew Luck coming into 2018? The hard thing with Andrew Luck is that injury. Uh and the question mark of when he starts. Mm-hmm. The biggest thing for me beyond just the injury was I was sitting here wondering, when is he actually going to start? Because mm-hmm. I, without a doubt, I think he'll be back at some point in the season. Is it going to be a week one, two, three, four, whatever it's going to be? But if, if he comes back in like a week five or six, it was not a good idea to draft him early. You know, that's the thing that really made him fall for me. I mean, 
I love having Quentin Nelson. Uh, they went with Smith in the second round, another guard. You know, they were not afraid to go and get what he needs. They got a lot of pieces uh, on the defense as well. You know, they tried to make this team all around better, but still we sit here with the fact that even though he's got a better uh, offensive line, even though he's got some pass rush help on the defensive side of the ball now, Mm -hmm. the Colts still have quite a few holes to fix. Well, he hasn't thrown a regular football, too. He's basically thrown mini nerf football. But I'm not too concerned about that. When he's he's back, he'll be back. Mm -hmm. And he's got a better team around him. It's just when he's going to be back. Exactly. And I don't know that until I have a more firm answer, Mm -hmm. I am not willing to spend a higher draft pick. I would be very, very thrilled if I got if I was someone who waited, and you know maybe I get a top tier ish quarterback like mm-hmm. a Jared Goff, uh, Alex Smith, a Mitch Trubisky, you know Ben Roethlisberger, a guy who's towards the top but not at the top, mm-hmm. and then I can say get Andrew Luck. You know if I have a quarterback that's got a uh, a week eight, nine, ten type of uh, bye week. I would love to have Andrew Luck because I know he'll be ready by then. I am really scared for Andrew Like, scared not for Andrew Luck, but basically I am not drafting Andrew Luck this year. Like, he is the one quarterback on this list that is not Josh McCown that I would say don't even draft him. Just don't even waste your time with him because when it comes to me with fantasy football, if he's going to be that big of a question, I'm going to try to get what I need somewhere else. Like, I think it's going to be a huge, like, as of right now, now if everything pans out and the injury, like if we find out by the reg- regular season that hey he's going to start week one and that he's been playing well in his preseason games and practices and stuff, then maybe this gets erased. But right now at this time, I'm not even going to waste my time on him, and that's why for me I had him at twenty because I'm like you know what, just because he's Andrew Luck, he deserves to be a top twenty fantasy quarterback, but I can't put him any higher. Yeah, but if he's a hundred percent healthy could shoot up to his highest top ten. He's a, he's going to be a little bit of that uh, that gamble. I mean, you're going to have to make that gut call yourself mm-hmm. come draft night. I wouldn't if you're going to roll the dice or not. And honestly, I feel like if I'm sitting there and I let's say I magically got Aaron Rodgers, mm-hmm. you know, or Tom Brady, Carson. So you Wentz, got the number one. Pick I got in your one draft. of these great guys. No, if you got the number one pick in your draft, you don't draft a quarterback. Some people do. You don't do that, Ricky. I don't, but you I'm don't. saying some people you do. don't we, do it. In our draft, we've had number one picks be Aaron Rodgers before. Yeah, and, and, and they make bad decisions. Uh, <laughs> but let's say that you somehow get the one of the top three, four quarterbacks. You mm-hmm. get the tier one quarterback. Yeah. You can sit there and say, I'll take an Andrew Luck. Mm-hmm. I will draft an Andrew Luck because you have such great trade bait potential later if he, on. And if he's not good by the bye week that I need him, I can just pick someone else up. There'll have been someone else on the on the waiver wire mm-hmm. that you can get. If you're an IR, the only, if you have a league of IR, you just stash them on the IR anyways. The only way that hurts you is like last year, let's say you did that, and what mm-hmm. happened to Aaron Rodgers last year happens, where it's like, sure. great, he got injured, I'm fucked. Yep. But were you really going to want your backup quarterback to fill in for that much time anyways? No. So I don't think it's that big of a difference mm-hmm. in that case. That's why to me it's like it's just the biggest question mark. And for me, I would just avoid them all together. It's all it's all about your else. risk tolerance. Exactly. And I'm not I don't think he's that big of a risk tolerance. Other well, guy, you're, it's your risk tolerance. Exactly. I don't yeah. think that you don't have enough tolerance yeah, to risk. Exactly. The guy I wanted to mention next though is mm-hmm. Alex Smith. Okay. Because if he was with the Chiefs, I might have him in the top ten, might even have him like close to top five. But with this Washington Redskin team, when it comes to fantasy, yeah, they've got some receiving options out there. But like we talked about last week, they do have a great tight end. But what we talked about last week when it comes to them, will those receivers be enough for Alex Smith? Will Doxon, Crowder, Richardson, will they be enough for Alex Smith? Well, they have a great weapon in Darius Geis. Exactly. But so is that's that, nice. But are they going to use him as a primary runner? Is how much is he going to be receiving out of the backfield? Well, even if he g- opens up the opportunity for play action, mm-hmm. it'll certainly help. Um, it, and to me, I wonder what they're going to ask Alex Smith to do. Exactly. Are they going to sit there and watch week one against the Patriots mm-hmm. and say, I want that Alex Smith? Or are they going to You don't si- have the weapons. So. Exactly. Or are they going to sit there and say, I want, this, Hill? I want this dink and dunk Alex Smith. Bring me that guy. Yeah. But if you want dink and dunk... Alex Smith is a solid middle of the road fantasy mm-hmm. football quarterback. Um, 
So, yeah, I mean, that's the hard thing. We don't really know what they're going to ask him to do, what they're going to want. And I agree with you completely. Mm -hmm. I don't trust the weapons around him. I don't know that I trust the coaching staff all that much because they had a great Kirk Cousins quarterback. And, and they this just is let a, him go. They let him go, and this is a completely different quarterback. Mm -hmm. And even before they let him go, they let some of his weapons go as well. So it's the kind of thing where that alone scares me just decision-making-wise, but I just don't know what kind of Alex Smith we're going to see. I'm willing to draft him, mm -hmm. not as my number one quarterback probably, uh, but I think that he's the kind of guy where if I draft him, I'm going to draft another quarterback probably fairly soon as well. Well, and I mean, some people are going to say, well, guys, 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 you're crazy because Alex Smith last year, and I'm looking at ESPNs, mm -hmm. um, of course they won't let me change off a of PPR, but whatever, I'll deal with it. Um, last year he had, how many points did he have? About 295, maybe 96, um, if you're going to round up, but he was the fourth most scoring quarterback last year. He was on a great team with a great offensive a great coordinator. Team. That's exactly what I was going to say. And a coach only, that is known for making quarterbacks better. He only had two games where he scored less than double-digit points. It was Week 11 when he had 7.9 against the um, Giants. That's when he had two INTs, no touchdowns, 230 yards. The other one was when he had zero points against Denver because he didn't play. Those yeah. were the only two times. Otherwise, it was all double digits. And I'm looking at most of them, like, upper 20s. There's a few 30s in there, high teens. So I mean, you, you got to think about it for, for those type of people mm -hmm. of, you know, Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, I just, Kareem Hunt coming out of nowhere. I just don't These think, guys were so – these weapons around them are so much better. And because of that, like, you see the, oh, 27 against Washington, the 26, 27 points against Houston, the 37 points against the Jets – Let's tailor those down a little bit. Maybe his high is not a 37 game. It's a 27 game. It's a 29 game. Mm -hmm. to Which where is still it's like, good. It's still good, but it's like you maybe see one of those, yeah. not two or three of those, maybe even four and, of those like we did last year. And this year. falls in, similar to Andrew Luck, but in a different way, mm -hmm. another risk tolerance type of thing where you have to mm -hmm. ask yourself deep down in your gut, are you comfortable taking a guy that has – Lesser weapons now, mm -hmm. different coaching staff around him, a team that is lower quality, you know, just all this new stuff. Are you willing to do that? Um, and for me, I I don't necessarily know that I would take that risk in that case. Mm -hmm. And I really think, too, that, you know, you look at what he had around him. Having coach, you know, a coach in uh, Andy Reid is going to be amazing. Also had Matt Nagy. Well, I was going to get to that next. Matt Nagy, a guy who was a great offensive coordinator, who is a hotly desired mm -hmm. offensive coordinator to become a head coach. Now he's a head coach. Yep. And people are talking about Chicago as one of these underrated dark horse type of offenses. Yeah, bears. Um, he doesn't have that mm -hmm. right now. He does not have that in Washington. Uh, and even though Kirk Cousins was able to do good stuff in Washington, Kirk Cousins is a very different quarterback than Alex Smith. And it's not a Alex Smith is going to be a bad fantasy football quarterback. It's I would draft these 12 people before I would draft Alex Smith. Mm -hmm. There's also a few quarterbacks here that I feel like this is the range mm -hmm. where there's a lot of questions. Because to me, I look at like Big Ben. Question about, yeah, you've got the killer bees out there, but the Le'Veon thing, how much is that going to hurt? Yeah. Um, really, is it just Antonio is it, Brown Is it going to be in his head about racing, racing Mason Rudolph? Yeah, how he was asked about that and basically said, I'm not going to worry about that kind of a thing. Like, but he did immediately come out and say, I'm him. mad about it. Mm -hmm. He also said, don't worry, guys, i got three to five more years left. Yeah. Don't worry, I'm still here. Which I, this is, to me, because that was one of the things we would have talked about if we weren't going to do the fantasy ranking thing. Yeah. The thing I like about that is, it, it reminds me exactly of Brett Favre. Yeah, you might, exactly. You might have three to five left, but that three, four, five is probably going to be with well, our team. And here's the thing, which even more is is uh, Brett Favre. Of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I might retire, he says in 2016. No, I'll come back. Mm -hmm. 2017, yeah, I might retire. No, I'll I come back. 2018, this, finally, they call his bluff. And he's like, no, 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 I'm still here. I'm still here. And this isn't for this year. This mm -hmm. is just a little off tangent about Big Ben. I still think he plays this year starter, next year starter, contracts over. It's like, bon voyage, Big Ben. We got your replacement, and he'll go play with another team for about two more years. But, like, Big Ben, 
question to me with teams that are the players around him. Will he have the same weapons for next year or mm-hmm. for this year? Jimmy Garoppolo. They didn't really go like, yeah, they got you a Mike McGlinchey to protect you, but that's not going to get you fantasy points. They didn't go and get you yeah. a weapon this offseason. So for Jimmy Garoppolo, is he really going to make a big jump or is he just kind of going to stay? He mm-hmm. wins games, but is he going to stay in that middle teen area yeah. for fantasy points? Dak Prescott, they get rid of Dak Pre- or they get rid of Des Bryant, don't really add anything he didn't throw there. Him anyways. What are they going to do year three? And then with the mm-hmm. Zeke. Suspension that also played into that as well, and then Matt Ryan, you lose Taylor Gabriel. Yep. I know you add, they added a and wide receiver, but it's like eh, the you know old what? old adage of he got paid. Is exactly. he going to play that hard this year? He did. Like they added Calvin Ridley, but it's like I do like the Calvin Ridley though. I, that, is, that gonna, is that going to be enough to offset Julio the Jones. Taylor Gabriel? Oh, I love um, it. Devonta connection. Freeman. Mm-hmm. That is a p- high powered offense. Do you think then he makes a jump from where he is right now in our rankings? Because he's some might think he's a little. Low I got a couple guys 17. in this territory that I think are low. Because I had and, and at, we're part of it. Because I had Matt Ryan at seventeen. You had him at eighteen. Yeah. So it's not like we were vastly different. No, I think Matt Ryan is one of those guys who, if anybody is saying you have him too low, mm-hmm. I'm going to say. All right, you probably have a point. Yeah. I I still stand by my rankings. Mm -hmm. The other one I do think is Ben Roethlisberger. Okay. But the thing about Ben Roethlisberger to me is just this. We have seen a little bit of the decline. uh, You know, not a huge decline for for Big Ben, but the Steelers in general as Mm -hmm. well. Then also the fact of, uh, you know, with Matt Ryan, I am a little bit of a firm believer in once you pay him, they don't try as hard the next mm-hmm. year. The immediate following year is a down year usually once Kind you pay of a like, guy. I know I'm going to bring a basketball reference into this, but it's like what we're seeing with Hassan Whiteside on the Heat where it's like contract year, oh my God, he's amazing, he's playing, and then he gets paid and it's like, oh, wh- why don't you care anymore? Because they don't have to. Why don't you care <laughs> they anymore? They don't have to. Why, why are you getting a little lazy, Hassan? And, and I want to throw I want to throw something out too. A couple, mm-hmm. a couple guys I want to mention. Uh, Patrick Mahomes... I like the potential of Patrick McCall- Mahomes. I was going to say. But the two things that I really have against him right now is mm-hmm. I, I just want to pause the hype. He's new. Mm-hmm. We haven't really seen him play. I mean, he had that, like, one game where he did well. We haven't really seen him play. The other thing is, yes, Andy Reid is there, but Matt Nagy is not there. So if anybody's Treat looking him at, like a rookie this yes, year. Yes, if anybody's looking at what Alex Smith was able to do, mm-hmm. you have to pause and say, well, hold on. The offensive coordinator is different. Mm-hmm. We're, we have new things that we're learning right now. Yeah. Um. So I think you need to put a pause on that. Uh. The other guy I want to mention is Sam Bradford. I was gonna bring him up. He needs to get mentioned because if you had watched our our first segment, you know that I pointed out all of the they have a rookie behind them mm-hmm. quarterbacks, including Joe Flacco. And Sam's the last one. Sam Bradford's the last one. But I feel more confident about Sam Bradford not losing his job to the rookie. It's just injury. Injury is the thing to be scared of with Sam Bradford. To me, it was a two-pronged thing because just for the sake of parity, Mm -hmm. I had Sam Bradford the lowest at 22. You had him the highest out of two of us at 16. 16. So you were closer to where he kind of finished up. He finished off at 18 because of me. Mm -hmm. But the two things I thought of was, one— Injury. I feel like he's either going to get injured or he's going to get benched. Like, that's what I think. I like, really don't see the bench. I still feel like there's a possibility he could even get benched this year just because of the quarterback behind him. However, the positive side, is it going to be a positive having a guy like Larry Fitzgerald? Because mm-hmm. he's never— And David Johnson. And David Johnson, but I'm talking receiver-wise. Run he game didn't, helps. He didn't have a Larry mm-hmm. Fitzgerald in Minnesota. He didn't have a Larry Fitzgerald— in yeah. Philadelphia. Yeah, a lot of that, too, was staying on the field healthy, but Larry Fitzgerald is a yeah. great target to have. And they've got a good defense. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not what it used to be, but it's it a has good no defense. Honey Badger. You know that he's in Houston now. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's still a good defense, so he will get the ball back. Yep. You know, that's one of those things right there where, you know, a lot going in his favor for that. And of those, those guys who have a rookie behind them, he's the one I feel the most confident about. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously, he's in the second tier here. Now, I feel like this question is going to be kind of slighted towards the younger players, but Mm -hmm. I'll ask you the same question I had at the end of the last one. 
Take your pick. Who's the one guy from 11 through 21 that you feel like next year we're talking about in the top 10? Well, a guy who I think we kind of slighted a little bit only because we don't have the sample size is Jared Goff. Jared Goff. Did we slight him? Well, I mean, we just haven't mentioned him. He's sitting here at 12. True. I would call that a slight. He's sitting behind Mitchell Trubisky. I mean, I had him at 14 only because, like, I don't know. Like, I I couldn't put him above Big Ben, Alex Smith, and Drew Brees. I I believe I I did. I had him at 10. Yeah. You know, and I, I and here's the thing for me with Jared Goff was if we go off of the rookie year. Well, you didn't have him terrible. in front of Drew Brees because you had Drew Brees higher than No, me. I love Drew Brees. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you if you have him there, I mean, you look at rookie year, you forget about it. If you look at this sophomore year, his second year, which is last year, the thing about Drew, uh, not Drew Brees, the thing about Jared Goff was it was great. For me, I just want to see it again. That's the only thing that's giving me the reservation with Jared Goff. I'm not willing to take him. You know, I had him at 10. Mm-hmm. You know, I wasn't able to, and, and you can figure out who some of these guys are, but this isn't the order, so I'm mm-hmm. okay with this. You know, I wouldn't take him above a Drew Brees, Kirk Cousins, Stafford, Rodgers, Tom Brady, you know, yeah. Carson Wentz, any of those type of guys. Guys we're going to talk about in a little bit. You know, I wouldn't take him above those guys. Mm-hmm. Um, although, feel free to call me out on a little bit of this hypocrisy if you want to say small sample size because Carson Wentz is obviously still hasn't been mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, or Deshaun Watson obviously yeah. has not been mentioned yet. But anyways... Um, you know, I'm okay with that, but for me with Jared Goff and part of it's just the Rams in general, Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit scared of, is this a, was this 2014 or 2013 when the chiefs first got Alex Smith and first got Andy Reid and they were really hot and they had a great season. I don't remember which year it was. Yeah. No one had tape on them. They had an easy schedule. Um, I think that the Rams surprised a lot of people Mm -hmm. and Jared Goff is, I think is a good quarterback. But I'm not willing to put him as the, into this top tier of fantasy yet, mm-hmm. only because I want to see it again. And I am willing to be proven wrong on Jared Goff for this one. I'm okay with that mm-hmm. if I get to see it again. He's a guy who I think, if things go right, will shoot himself right into the top five fantasy football quarterbacks. I've got two names. Two that I think could be, one of these two will be talking about top ten next year. One I already have in the top ten mm-hmm. is Mitch Trubisky. I think he's going to... He's either I going so. to be a top 10 or this year, like I, I hope he's say number one. is, but also I feel like he's going to have a such a big jump his sophomore year with Nagy that next year the hype train's even going to be even bigger with him, where it's mm-hmm. like he's a top 10 fantasy option at quarterback. The other guy's Jimmy Garoppolo, and I know I said, oh, he doesn't have the weapons, but I feel like what's going to happen with him is he's still going to be really good. He's going to be like a 15 to 18 kind of a guy for fantasy, but then this next offseason, they will add then those wide receiver weapons they didn't get this time, and that will boost him. It's like, oh, Jimmy's got his weapons. There mm-hmm. he goes. He's a top-time guy. Because I feel like this is the area where this is relevant. Mm-hmm. Who's going to fall? No, not who's going to fall. Who's Is there a sleeper in here that's like, Patrick Mahomes. You should target this guy. You really think Patrick Mahomes is I, a sleeper? I'm saying sleeper only because of what we said. Treat him like he's a rookie. But there's that potential with that arm that KC really liked Mm -hmm. in that KC system with those KC weapons. He's a guy that if I got my number one, I got my number two, I'm sitting last round. I'm I'm just taking whatever. My question is what system? I'm going ahead and grabbing him. We don't know the system yet. But it's not going to, like, yeah, Matt Nagy's not there, but it's not going to be high. It's not going to be vastly different than what we saw. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be the same but the weapons are still similar. He still has, and they added Sammy Watkins to that wide receiver core. So, I mean, to me, he's the biggest sleeper here to where with that, what, what, what they like, what they like to do, the weapons out there, if he's a guy last round still there, snag him even if you're holding three because it could benefit you later in the year. Yeah, I don't think Patrick, uh, Patrick Mahomes will last that long for I'm, for people or later rounds. Yeah, I I, th- I just think that he's one of those guys where the hype train is too too much. You got most right of now. your starters. You're sitting there going, I'm looking for some bench players. I've got two quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. I'd still take Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, I I don't disagree necessarily. I just think the hype train is gonna or ride him too before high before you get to that. point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The How guy who you? I who I pick is Sam Bradford. Okay, uh, if, if it's play, risk if he plays all sixty. Yeah, I mean it's risk for sure. Remember but, two. Two years ago, I made the bold prediction saying he'd play every game, and he did. He so did. It could happen. So that I mean, that's the thing. I mean, that's the that's the per- <laughs> that's all the evidence I need in the world to say it it's possible. Once. It is possible. It Didn't it happen his rookie year? 
I thought he started all 16 in his rookie year. Maybe. I don't um, know. But anyways, he's been fans, of, fans of Sam Bradford, let us know down in below. Mm-hmm. But uh, he's a good quarterback. He's got a great running back who hopefully is going to be healthy. Mm-hmm. He's got Fitz, uh, Fitz uh, Gerald Joe, there. Not Fitz Magic. I always want to say it now. Fitz Magic has ruined it for me. Anytime there's a Fitz, I want to say Fitz Magic. But anyways, um, he's there as well. So this is going to be good. It's a good defense. He's going to have a lot of opportunities. The other mm-hmm. thing that's nice, and you know, you could say the same thing about Jared Goff, Russell Wilson, Jimmy Garoppolo. Mm-hmm. They're in a division that is designed for shootouts. Yep. And he's going to be forced to throw it, and Sam Bradford can throw it. He's accurate. He's got a great arm. He can do it. He can make it happen. So he's a he's a good guy to kind of reach out. And I think he'll fall because people are scared of Josh Rosen and the, and injury. the injuries. Well, this is where you guys come in. Let us know what you think about our 11 through 21 down below. And who do you like? Who do you not like? Who's going to rise? Who's going to fall? Let us know how you would rank them down below in the comment section. Let's move on, though, into the final segment where we are looking at number one through number 10. We'll do it the same way, though. We'll start with number 10 in our fantasy football quarterback rankings, the Carolina Panther quarterback, Scam Newton, or Scootin' Newton. I call him Scam. It should be Cam. Yeah, I guess you can say Scam Newton, but Cam Newton. I think we're past that. Cam Scootin' Newton is what I meant to say. Mm -hmm. Then number nine, Saints quarterback, Drew Brees. That was also, I got to mention, that was a tiebreaker where... The way we broke it is we mess- messaged a uh, patron, uh, Christian, on Twitter, told him I was going to give him a shout-out. So go ahead and follow Christian on Twitter. I think it's like one-on-one and then whatever his last name is or Sordia or whatever it is. Go, go under my followers at Ricky Widmer and find Christian. It says <laughs> There's Christian. There's a lot of work that you got to put well, into. Well, no, I—, I Put him in the description. I put him in the description. I'll put him in the description, but I also quoted a recent tweet from him. Mm -hmm. It's Christian on my Twitter. Me and him always go back and forth. He helped us break the tie. He said Drew Brees over Cam Newton, so that's why he's at 9, Newton's at 10. Then we got Matt Stafford at number 8, the Detroit Lions quarterback. Chaja quarterback at 7, Phillip Rivers. Then Kirk Cousins, the Viking quarterback, new Viking quarterback at number 6. Tom Brady at number five. This is one that's going to irk some people. Yep. Ma- mainly Sean Anderson, but we'll hopefully oh, get a lot into of it in the segment. Out there who are pissed then right at now. number four, he was injured most of last year. Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson. Then at number three, Super Bowl winning quarterback Carson Wentz. Not according to my Twitter followers. My Twitter followers I'm, have voted and said no. I'm just saying that because of the tweet that you put up earlier this week. Then at number two, Russell Wilson, and at number one, Aaron Rodgers. And Mm -hmm. where I want to start with this is basically what I had what I had asked you before, because you had Aaron Rodgers number one, Russell Wilson number two. I had Russell Wilson number one, Aaron Rodgers number two. What went into your decision making to put A Rodge one, Mm -hmm. Russell Wilson two? Uh well one, he's Aaron Rodgers. (laughs) Two, you know he's broken my heart too many times, Ricky. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, here's the thing. You you brought it up, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna throw it right in your face immediately. Okay. That Russell Wilson last year, he led everybody in points. Yeah. He was ahead of Aaron Rodgers, but but Aaron, Aaron Rodgers, Rodgers didn't play. did miss about eight games. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, that's a big deal. Um, and when he did come back, it didn't matter, and then they benched him again, and mm-hmm. therefore they had to cut him. And soon he will be joining your favorite team. Uh, anyways, uh, Aaron, that's a big thing for me. I mean, he's got some new weapons uh, on the offensive side of the ball, mm-hmm. and it doesn't matter because Aaron Rodgers, he's a guy who makes people better. Yeah. But the other part of it is this, and this is an underrated part, is the fact that all of a sudden the Aaron, uh, the, not that the Aaron Rodgers, although that's what I should call them, the mm-hmm. Green Bay Packers uh, went and they did. A nice thing for them, Mm -hmm. not for the rest of the NFC North. They drafted not one, but two starting caliber NFL-ready corners for this defense. And then they got Equiminia St. Brown later on in the draft for the wide receivers. Way, way later in the draft. The The uh, guy I wanted the Bears to get will now be playing against the Bears. Right. A tall, fast, wide receiver. That's exactly what A-Raj needs. You know, I I sit there and and I look at it and I'm like, well, you just gave through the draft mm-hmm. Aaron Rodgers more time with the ball in his hand. Because you're going to shut down offenses. Hopefully. Exactly, and you're going to get more interceptions mm-hmm. now. 
you are going to make this happen. Aaron Rodgers is going to have the ball more. Mm-hmm. Sure, he lost Jordy Nelson, and that is kind of a big deal. But, but you Jordy Nelson add, was hurt. To me, you added Equimania St. Brown, who's probably going to be the latest steal. Like, out of like the day, like day three, the biggest day mm. three steal of this draft. It's totally possible. Um, like, I mean, even look at it this way, mm-hmm. and I'll look at it this way for the Packers is – a guy like Gmo, Geronimo Allison. The only reason I call him Gmo is because he played for the Illinois Fighting Illini, and that's what we called him when he was with Illinois. This was a guy that got undrafted free agent, I believe, went to the Indianapolis Colts. Didn't pan out with the Colts. I believe yep. got cut by him. Gets picked up by the Packers. Is a rel- is, is he number one? No, but he's a reliable weapon, a big target for Aaron Rodgers. And Aaron Rodgers, I'm going to say, basically kind of saved his career, saved the kid's career, because mm-hmm. now he's actually contributing on a team. So I'm a Chicago Bears fan, that needs to be mm-hmm. said. But I am scared of Aaron Rodgers this year, because okay. I think Aaron Rodgers is going to be very angry this year for a mm-hmm. few things. One, he was hurt. Uh, two, everybody's talking a lot about this Kirk Cousins guy, and, and I really bet that Aaron Rodgers is not going to be happy Fully guaranteed, that. baby. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Aaron Rodgers is happy about that. And a lot of people that got paid more mm-hmm. than him, um, you know, and he, his deal is not done yet. Mm-hmm. So I think that Aaron Rodgers is going to be mad. I think he's going to play hard. I think he's going to beat down any defense that comes his way because mm-hmm. he's Aaron Rodgers. That's why i got to put him above Russell Wilson. Yes, there's a be- they've, they've improved the offensive line for Russell Wilson. He is the mobile quarterback. He's going to have uh, rushing touchdowns. Although Aaron Rodgers will also get rushing yards, will mm-hmm. also get uh, rus- rushing touchdowns. But for me, it's just a simple thing of, Aaron Rodgers can do more, mm. and the Seattle Seahawks defense is declining. Even though this team on the Seahawks, they're not happy with the way the season ended last year, mm-hmm. so they will play harder. Uh, you do know his first two games of the year, too, right? Who's Russell's Aaron, or Aaron, Aaron Rodgers? No, I don't care about the Packers that His much. first game, mm-hmm. Sunday night, at home, against the Bears. Game two. Well, I mean, they're going to get shut out then. So it's I mean, a new, that. It's a noon game. Well, mm-hmm. noon for us here in the Midwest at home against the Vikings. So he's got Bears Vikings. So to he's start the really going to be mad. At home. He's really going to be mad. It could be. Or he could get injured by Anthony Barr well, again. No, no. Roquan <laughs> Smith. Let's oh, give credit to Roquan. Yeah, Roquan's going to injure him week Is one. Is it going to be week one, first play? He's going to put him down. You know, much like uh, Anthony Barr did. Or the other thing I was going to say is is Wooten to Brett Favre. Yes. Um, just stared, looked down at him. And uh, like Erlacher just looking down at him. Roquan Smith's going to say, you're welcome <laughs> to Chicago Bears fans out there. Uh, no, I, I think that Aaron Rodgers, I'm terrified of so him this year. here's why I put Russell, like, and this goes into me, a mm. greater discussion for the top 10, because I valued guys like Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson, like some people, I had him at three. Some people might not have him that high. Yeah, I had him at I five. I had him at number three. Guys like Carson Wentz, guys like why I had Scam Newton over a Drew Brees, the debate you and I had and Christian mm-hmm. had to break it. So the thing that I look at is, yes, Russell Wilson led the league in fantasy points last year. Yes, Aaron Rodgers missed a big gap of games. And missed two at the end because the Packers were like, screw it, we're not in playoff contention. We're going to sit him. But the thing that I wonder is guys like Russell Wilson, guys like Deshaun Watson, guys like Cam Newton, and you can even throw Carson Wentz into this discussion, are they more valuable, more so to me, Wilson and Watson, because they can not only do it with their arm, they can do it with their leg, and in most fantasy leagues, a rushing touchdown is worth six to where a passing touchdown is only worth four because, like, I look at Russell Wilson last year. Yeah, he had 34 touchdowns through the air, but he had three touchdowns on the ground. You might say, well, Ricky, he had 30 through 34 through the air. The bigger example of this is Cam Newton had about, what, 12 less touchdowns through the air, Mm -hmm. had about five more interceptions, which is more negative points, but he had about almost 200 more rushing yards and three more touchdowns on the ground. A guy like Cam Which is more points. Yeah. Yeah. So to me, it's almost like do you, like, and this is the reason why Mm -hmm. I put the injury also played into it too a little bit because he was injured last year with Aaron Rodgers, but 
do you go with more of a mobile quarterback because of that stipulation? It has that you potential, get more points? but it comes to risk tolerance mm-hmm. as well. Those guys are more likely to get injured. Mm-hmm. Quarterbacks are, are much more likely to get injured when they scramble than when they don't. Look at Carson Wentz. He was mm-hmm. scrambling into the end zone when that helmet, I think it was a helmet that hit his knee. Yeah, and I I think they were saying I don't remember. They were saying something about when they thought it happened mm-hmm. with the with the injury. They thought it happened potentially more before the hit actually happened. But while he was playing with it. Yeah. Uh but anyways, um you know, but for what it really comes down to in my mm-hmm. eyes when it comes to these mobile quarterbacks, you know, I'm scared of mobile quarterbacks in mm-hmm. general. I, I don't trust them to stay healthy. Um uh, I mean, we're going to talk about a guy pretty soon in Deshaun Watson who did not do that last year. Yep. He did not stay healthy. Um but anyways, it just comes down to total points. I just mm-hmm. think that doesn't matter that he's not going to be getting rushing touchdowns as much or rushing yards as much. I just think Aaron Rodgers is going to score more points. Mm-hmm. Well, and that could like, mm-hmm. and the big thing for Aaron Rodgers that plays into your situation is, hey, he was injured for seven games. We don't know yeah. what's going to happen. A guy that, and the reason why I had him at three was Deshaun Watson because he's kind of in the same boat as Aaron Rodgers. And why you're high on Aaron Rodgers is the same reason I'm high on Deshaun Watson because, yes, we've got film on him this year and he might not become, like, a gangbuster, but, like, there was a stretch from the New England game week three until he got injured against Seattle week eight Mm -hmm. to where, and this is average between all the leagues, but he's got 20 against New England, then 33 against Tennessee, 35 against KC. That was the five-touchdown game that he had. Then 28 against, or no, 23 against Cleveland, and then 32 against Seattle before he got injured. That was the one where he had three interceptions, but he also threw for four touchdowns and and probably some runs in there, too. There's going to be people out there who, who, and this is not necessarily the topic of conversation Mm because we're talking specifically fantasy football, but there are going to be people out there who are going to throw into question of, well, he beat the Browns, the Titans, and the Bengals. Mm -hmm. He lost to the Jaguars, the Patriots the Chiefs, and the Seahawks. There's going to be people out there who are going to say, yes, but look at that. But we're not talking about the Texans as a team. We're not talking about whether they're going to win games or lose games, how mm-hmm. good of a team they are. We're specifically talking about Deshaun Watson. Yeah. When Deshaun Watson's out there, I mean, in these, what was it, seven games, 19 touchdowns, eight interceptions. Mm-hmm. Not amazing. Sure, you could use less interceptions, but 19 in eight in seven games, I am more than thrilled about that. He's getting four and five and three touchdowns in almost every game with a couple of uh, actually three exceptions, but he was coming out hot and getting hotter as it kept going. He's getting yards. He's got a great defense out there that's going to give him the ball back. Deshaun Watson, there's a lot to be excited about, and this is why I said to people, if you listen to the rest of the podcast, Mm -hmm. you know I said Call me out on my hypocrisy because I said Jared Goff, I don't trust the sample size. Mm-hmm. I shouldn't trust Deshaun Watson's sample size. But you do. I'm. It's not that I do. I'm really just buying into the hype, mm-hmm. I think, is part of it. And, and I'm concerned about that. And I'm willing to admit that Deshaun Watson could have a huge sophomore year slump. Mm-hmm. He could easily do that. It's totally possible. He could just get hurt again. That's also possible. But there's so much potential because this team is so good. And uh, – mm-hmm. He was so hot for a while that I'm willing to buy in right now. No, and that's something to where it – and what I was trying to do on my phone was pull up mm-hmm. um, our league last year because I was going to see our league champion who he had as his quarterback. Because I don't think he had Aaron Rodgers. He obviously didn't later on. And I'm logged in on our computer to the onside kick account, so that's why I was trying to do that. But, like, for me it's just it comes down to – Where are you going to value these guys that have that mobile aspect? Mm -hmm. Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson, Carson Wentz, Cam Newton, because I think that they, that's why I was a little bit higher on them because they're going to have that benefit that the other just true passers aren't. And that's why Tom Brady got knocked because Deshaun Watson at three for me, Carson Wentz at four for me. And it's like Tom Brady also loses Brandon Cook this year loses Danny Amendola this year. Yeah, he gets Julian Edelman back, didn't have Edelman last year. Gronk is a question, but right now Gronk is still on the team. So, I mean, Tom Brady, it's like, go get Tom Brady if he's available and you want him. But that's why I had him at five, because of the dual threats that are above him. But one guy I want to ask you about Mm -hmm. is Kirk Cousins. He's a guy, you had him at seven, I had him at six. We virtually almost have him in the same spot. 
are people going to overhype Kirk Cousins this year? Potentially, yeah, I think they could. Um, but at the same time, there's also a lot of doubters on Kirk Cousins. Mm -hmm. So he's one of those ones where it really is just going to depend on the people in your league if you have enough of those people who are sitting there saying, I mean, I don't think he deserves a fully guaranteed contract. Mm -hmm. Or a lot of people who say fully guaranteed contract. I'm all in. Yeah. He's number one. Um, and I, I do think that that contract is a thing that's going to hang on to him. Mm -hmm. um, but I look at what a guy like Case Keenum, a guy like Sam Bradford, was able to do with the Minnesota Vikings, and I say, well, I think Kirk Cousins is a better quarterback than that. Mm -hmm. I see no reason why he's not top 10 then. You yeah. know, he should be because he's got a lot of skills. Well, now he's, he's going to be able to make this work. And I don't know if you just mentioned this here. Maybe I'm reiterating. Mm -hmm. He actually has weapons now in Minnesota. Yeah. He's got Stefan Diggs. He's got he's got a much better Thielen defense. Thielen, a much better defense. He's got Kyle. Like to me, the tight end is the only thing he has consistent. Yeah. Like Jordan Reed to Kyle Rudolph. All right, but like wide receivers, he's got better wide receivers. Mm -hmm. Dalvin Cook coming back with Latavius Murray. We've got better def we've got better running backs yeah. than they have in Washington. And and I really you might have noticed with the quarterbacks, I'm stressing the defense a lot. It's an underrated thing. Look at the defense of the team you're on. If you're on a mm -hmm. if you're drafting a quarterback who's got a bad defense, that just means that that quarterback's on the field less often. You know, you want to have a guy who's got a good defense mm -hmm. because they're going to give the ball back to your quarterback. He's going to have more opportunities. And that's all it is. It's just opportunity mm -hmm. uh, for these quarterbacks. You know, you want them to have as many pass, passes as potential. You know, you want them to, to be able to run the ball if you're into that kind of thing. And Kirk Cousins is going to have the opportunity to do that. Not to mention the fact that, once again, like I mentioned with the NFC West, mm -hmm. the, the NFC North is also a, a division that is primed for some shootouts. Now, there are better defenses in there that can make some low-scoring games, Minnesota and Chicago specifically. You know what I just noticed? There will be some shootouts. Mm -hmm. Somebody who looks at my personal rankings is going to think that I'm a NFC North because biased that's guy. that's all you got. I've got, I'm right there of, with well, you. Out of my top 10, I've got all four of them in my top 10. 40% mm -hmm. of my top 10 is one division. Yeah. And I would say... Okay, I only have Kirk, three of the four. Kirk in there. Cousins. Oh, well, I had Mitch in the top yeah. ten. That's why. But you had Mitch at what? Oh, okay, you had him a little I thought you had 13. him at eleven. Um, that's where he ended up being total. But I mean, that's just it. You even look at it like that's a division where Mitch might be the lowest one, but like Matthew Stafford, Kirk Cousins, and Aaron Rodgers. It's a loaded quarterback division. Yeah, it's a loaded quarterback division, and that's why, like with Matt Stafford, like. I didn't really know where to put him because overall as a quarterback, he's a really good quarterback. But really, nothing changed much on that offense, receiver-wise, weapon-wise, to where like I put him at 7, but I was like, should I put Phillip Rivers and Cam Newton ahead of you and have you at 9? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, Matthew Stafford is a little bit of a difficult one for me. He's a great— You had him at 9. Yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a great quarterback. He mm -hmm. is a guy you want on your team— you know, they just said it with uh, what Dan Orlovs Orlovsky, mm -hmm. Lovsky, weird name. Orlovsky. Um, you know, this is the big thing that was. It was on Twitter. It was on NFL Network where they were talking about. You know, he, I and I might get the numbers wrong, but it was like he had twenty um, fourth quarter drives, like end of the game drives, mm -hmm. uh, to to win. He won twenty out of twenty four times or mm -hmm. something like that. Talking about Matt Stafford did that. Yeah, or Orlowski he only did that? no Matt Stafford. Okay, Orlowski didn't do shit. I was like, why are we bringing up Dan Orlowski? No, because he's the one who said it. Oh, okay. he's the one who said it, and he said it was his stat. I think he or, said he I think leads... Orlowski is the guy that ran out of the back of the end zone for the Lions. Could have been. Uh, <laughs> he was backing up Matt Stafford for a while, mm -hmm. but you know, he said he leads the NFL in that. You know, he only had four times mm -hmm. where he didn't. Win that. Uh, one of them was a fumble. The other one was an issue. You know, all that type of stuff. Just Anyways, means his defense isn't good. Well, yeah, pretty much. But that's actually, in this type of case, it mm -hmm. works well in that favor because Matthew Stafford's constantly just throwing it. Yeah. Uh, so I guess well, that's The okay. run game ain't good in Yeah, Detroit. he has to. He's the only option. Mm -hmm. But that's the thing with Matt Stafford. Uh, Matthew Stafford, I should say. Um, you know, he is one of those guys where he's a little boomer bust. Mm -hmm. And I am favoring on the boom side of it but he is you know i've had him in fantasy football leagues where he's disappointed me you know and part of that is that the detroit defense isn't that great mm -hmm. that the run game has been fairly non-existent over the years you know that without calvin johnson it's not the same game of just throw it up there and he'll bring it down for mm -hmm. you 
you know, there is some risk to that. But I do think that he is a guy you do want to shoot for. He's a guy you want to reach and go grab. Not reach, I shouldn't say that. He is a guy you want to do that because this whole NFC North, like you said, I mean, there's going to be a lot of quarterback battles for sure. Any guy in this top 10 that we haven't hit that you think we should? There's not many. I mean, we didn't go into depth about Tom Brady, Phillip Rivers, Drew Oh, I Brees. think there's, yeah, I think there's guys we need to talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll mention Phillip Rivers briefly, and then I'll go into a guy who I think we need to. I mean, everybody who's, if you're a Chargers fan, you know I love the Chargers. You know that happens. You like to bolt up. I do bolt up. Uh, I, I think that, I always think they should be a good team, but they've got Pretty much everything you in place that they to need do to well, be, and then they don't. And when I keep stressing this defense, uh, this defense point, you know, Derwin James is there now. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a ball hawk out there. Yep. Uh, so you have some good opportunities, and it's also a year where they might be primed to take over this division this year in the AFC Depending West. Depending on how Mahomes fits in. Exactly. So there's a little bit of that. You know, I I do want to point out Carson Wentz. Okay. Because people might sit there and say. Well, you guys were nervous about Andrew Luck starting. I do believe Carson, Carson Wentz, Wentz starts has week come one. out and said though he's going. He believes he'll be starting week one. Yeah, like Andrew Luck, we haven't gotten that definitive of. And an there's no quarterback controversy. Mm-hmm. As much as everybody's trying to talk about it, and he they blatantly asking into his face. Well, how do you think Nick Foles feels? Who cares about how Nick Foles feels? He got a Super Bowl MVP. He's set for mm-hmm. life. He's good. He's going to get paid someday. It's, it's He's like fine. I said to you, and you agreed with me on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Nick Foles was the Trent Dilfer syndrome of didn't turn over the ball, really, except for the Super Bowl. The defense yeah, is more he of went the, out in the, the Super Bowl. The defense is more of the reason, though, that they got to the Super Bowl. Only giving up 10 points to a Matt Ryan team that had Taylor Gabriel, mm-hmm. who had those weapons. Only giving up seven points to a Vikings team that I don't even remember. I'll even look it up. I don't even know how many times they scored that few oh, points yeah. all year. I don't know if, if any. I, yeah. You know what? I'll look it up, but I don't. I'll put my money that I'll put my I'll Sean Anderson in. I'll put my car that they had at least eight or more points every single game last year. That they never scored that mm-hmm. low points all year. And I and I think that. Um, Please be right. <laughs> for, for Nick Foles, I mean, he did everything he needed. I mean, he went and he balled out at the Super Bowl. There's no doubt about that. Damn but it. He's a backup quarterback. Damn it. You lost it. It was even. Give me the keys. <laughs> They're mine now. Damn you're, it. You're walking It home. was the Detroit October 1st game, 14-7. to 7. There you But, go. like, other than that, the lowest they ever scored was when they lost 26-9 to 9 mm-hmm. to the Steelers. My point is... My point is, they only did it once. Like, yeah. It wasn't a thing that's it's like, oh, that's yeah. what the Vikings are doing. And for for those of you on YouTube, go ahead and put your uh, comments <laughs> down below if you want to be entered into the raffle for Ricky's car. No, We're going to no. raffle it out. Uh, never, it, never shook on it. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, and, and Tom Brady needs to get mentioned as well. Um, because we're a little low and people are going to yell at us for it. Uh, I mean, he's the greatest quarterback of all of all time. Greatest quarterback in the game today. However, that doesn't mean you're the best fantasy quarterback. Yeah, exactly. And I do think that Sonny Michelle is going to be a big deal. Even in though New Sean England. was upset about the pick because they didn't take Lamar Jackson. I mean, sure, because he <laughs> loves Lamar Jackson. Um, but, you know, this will take away a little mm-hmm. bit. I mean, this is a. And I'm not saying that they never have good good running backs. They get serviceable running backs and yeah. good running backs. But this is a guy who can be really good. Mm-hmm. And this is a guy who can give them something new, something different, um, to where I think they, they could. And we talk about risk a lot today. You are drafting a quarterback who's kind of up there in age. And I know it's Tom Brady. We're not allowed to say that because you're doing people the yell Ma- at us. You're doing the Max Kellerman, when's the cliff mark? I mean, I'm just saying that. <laughs> Max Kellerman, you the have cliff to, is supposed to be this offseason? I mean, you should, but <laughs> you have to be able to say to yourself, gut feeling, mm-hmm. yeah, I think he's got one more year. Let me put it this way. Mm-hmm. Last year in our draft, I traded picks to Sean because he really wanted Tom Brady, and I was okay not drafting Tom Brady. And Tom Brady did pretty well for Sean. Did Sean, But wait, did Sean win our league? Nope. No. So, I mean, just because you have Tom Brady doesn't mean you're going to win the league. Nope. Like, And that, to me, is I, I am okay with not having Tom Brady on my team if it means drafting another position. Yeah. So, I think Tom Brady is great, but he... 
I, I, you know, Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, Carson Wentz, mm-hmm. Deshaun Watson has better potential, I think. Um, the only other things is, you know, with, with Cam Newton, I do think C.J. Anderson puts a little bit of a down note for on Cam on Cam because you just got a one thousand yard running back. But how's the how are the carries going to be split up but between here's him the and thing. McCaffrey? Because you McCaffrey talk about can be used yeah. as a passing and, option, and that's great. But you talk about how much you love these running quarterbacks mm-hmm. because they're going to get you touchdowns. Cam doesn't need to do that now. And Cam's up there. Doesn't Cam, need to, up but Cam still will. He's getting up there in age. Mm-hmm. We constantly talk about how he needs to change his playing style. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, not we, but the, the NFL media in general. They also drafted DJ Moore, who could be a nice weapon for them. Exactly. So is he going to stop doing that a little bit and well, just become a little bit more And if you passer? notice, Cam Newton to me is the lowest out of them. To me, I think it's really going to pay dividends for Wentz, Watson, and Wilson. Mm-hmm. But I still with had the to... exception, of course, of Jameis Winston, Marcus Mariota. Yeah, well, because there was no way they're going to be top ten. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, with Newton, it was one of those where it's like, you know what? Because of that, I'm going to put you at eight. But I could have easily put him at like eleven behind Rivers, Trubisky, and Breeze. Here's an important question, mm-hmm. um, because it came out. Today or yesterday, that okay. uh, Kurt Warner almost made his NFL comeback last year. Really? He talked to a, a particular coach in the NFL that will apparently remain unnamed about coming back because they kind of needed a quarterback. The Jets? I don't know. It doesn't who say. Do you, who do you think it was, though? Who do I think it was? Yeah. I could see it being the Jets. Like, who I could really, also, who really I could also quarterback? have seen it being uh, the San Francisco 49ers before they traded for Jimmy Garoppolo. Or, ooh. Before they're desperate. Kurt, or Kurt if Warner it was comes the back. Packers after Aaron Rodgers went down? Could be. Kurt Warner comes back. Uh, where does he fit into this? You don't need to give me an exact pick. What area? Like what team? No, just what area. Kurt Cousins is, or not Kurt Cousins, Kurt Warner is here. I don't know. He's like a top 15er. All right. He's like a top 15. He's probably in the second segment we talked about, though. I'll go ahead and say the very 15. bottom because he's <laughs> Kurt Warner and he's old as hell. I mean, Kurt Warner can still sling it. I'm sure he can, but his body is gonna oh, one it's gonna hit. break. One hit and he's breath farved. Yeah, it's gonna break. I, I, it's just fun to talk about Kurt Warner coming back. I'm gonna ask you this: mm-hmm. flip side to what we've done before, sure. which one of these quarterbacks that's in our top ten now falls out next year? Falls out. Falls out because they can't go up; they can only go down. Well, if Tom Brady retires. Uh, <laughs> let's put that out there. Uh, Deshaun Watson, I think. Okay. If Deshaun Watson gets hurt again, a guy who's he's going to tumble. A guy who's number four in our but ranking. he is number four mm-hmm. purely on promise mm-hmm. because he looked really good and got hurt. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't know what the rest of that season would have been. He could have started throwing three interceptions a game. We have no idea if he gets hurt again. Or if he comes out and has a sophomore year slump, he is going to tumble at least 10 spots. I'll give you two. Either Cam Newton or Matthew Stafford. And the only reason mm-hmm. will be that a guy like Mitch Trubisky or a guy like Jared yeah, Goff bumps him. makes that jump and bumps him out. Quick question, uh, and that's not completely related. We don't mm-hmm. need to have the conversation right now. Yeah, Are we getting close to a make or break time for Cam Newton? And, and I know Cam Newton is an MVP. He is a great uh, quarterback. He's a fantastic long, quarterback. As long as Ron Rivera is there, no. Okay. I only thought about this only because I know some people were mm-hmm. fairly recently I saw on social media that people were kind of talking about Cam Newton uh, and the lows of Cam Newton. He's I, a high and low. Type I will of put it this way, and it is very simple. Take a look at the New York Jets. Just you don't want to be that. Just take a look at them. Mm-hmm. Take a look at the Cleveland Browns for many years. Yeah. You have a quality starter in the NFL. Keep it. Sure. But the most important position mm-hmm. is quarterback, yeah. and you have a quality starter. But a top 10 starter people in our have, rankings. People well, have said the same rankings. thing about, you know, we're in Chicago. Mm-hmm. People said the same thing about Jay Cutler of get rid of him. But you got a guy. Do you want to be the Cleveland I Browns? I don't think. I think the Cam Newton to Jay Cutler is apples to oranges. It's not apples to apples. You're not comparing. It's a quality quarterback. You're not, but to me, they're two different types of quarterback. Mm-hmm. They do two different things, and I don't think Cam Newton is the problem in Carolina. I think oh, they I don't just think don't have the either. weapons around him. I don't think he's the problem at all. I, I'm be, a big Cam Newton That fan. will be a discussion for another day when we do I, our preview of the Panthers. My thing, I just want you and down below in the comment mm-hmm. section just to just to think about it uh, right. is, and it's not part of this. We'll have the conversation someday. Mm-hmm. But Cam Newton is he close to a make or break? Yeah. 
like how we had the make or break for Blake Bortles and stuff. Ryan Tannehill is uh-huh. most likely in his make or break someone, season. Someone commented on that. We did that two seasons ago. Yeah. Someone recently commented on that and said we were stupid. But this is where I'm going to turn on to you guys. Let Mark know the question that he asked. Let us know what you think of our top ten fantasy quarterbacks. And also, housekeeping here at the end. You want to help support us? You like what we're doing? Check out patreon.com backslash most valid podcast. Want to be like Christian and come on to a podcast? Check out patreon.com, that link down below. Also, get the MVP t-shirt that Mark is wearing. You can get that at the store link down below in the description. Mostvalvepodcast.com, that's where you catch MVP each and every day. And last but not least, go on Apple Podcasts and iTunes. Is right now on YouTube. You're listening to us like you're on iTunes because the camera has gone and we've gone over our 30-minute requirement. Last thing, though, is to thank you guys for watching on YouTube. Thank you guys for listening on podcast services around the world. Next week, Mark and I will be back with our fantasy ranking running backs. That one might be top 30, might not be top 32. We will let you know next week. But thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. And as always, have a good day, everybody.